Yu-Gi-Oh players, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to play Ryzeal, full combo tutorial, deck profile, everything you need to know, why I'm simply just the best player on the planet, so no nope. better to learn from. I'm going to win YCS Sandheim with this exact list, so why don't you guys play the exact same list too, so you guys can top with me. Let's go. So, we're going to show you this video, before we do, make sure to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and the video coming soon, and the video gets 500 likes. Just kidding, probably not, but it's like anyways. Let's get straight into this video. The point of this deck is to summon as many Ryzeals as possible and play Sprite on steroids deck. However, it's not just your average Sprite deck. It is far, far, far better. If you guys are gonna notice, the biggest distinction of this deck and every other cookie cutter Ryzeal deck you've seen is this deck needs as many starters as humanly possible. And yes, that is Beyblades in the background. Go Drasil. Make sure to play as many pots as possible in small worlds. The reason why is most lists right now without 7 Tachyon are very inconsistent. You're going to find in your hundreds of matches that you played, as I have eventually with this deck, it's very tough to actually draw two Ryzeals. You want to have at least a few uh, ways to play with your hand traps. So by playing multiple pots, this deck does not care about pot whatsoever. If I banish a field spell, but I was never going to get in the first place, I couldn't care less. You got the field spell and plug in out and then do it? Who cares? Then you're good. Then it doesn't matter. Pot is very good in this deck. The reason I like this one is like this is 19 starters basically with the node. Even tested once with Palma Rising is not that bad. Like you can even put three pots and one Palma if you like. Like this ain't that bad. You have 18 starters, each of these are good. There has been many scenarios as you're comboing and playing and playing. You're actually able to summon all of these many, many times. But you're just out of Rise Yields. You're not capable of doing that. So having this is not that bad. And to force some decks, this could get pretty high. This could get to 2,900 attack as a level 4. So it's a game, even through D-Barrier, there's a line where you could get to near game by putting as many of these as possible in the field. Because this will hit 29 uh if my math is correct this will at 2900 this will be 17 17 plus 29 is 4600 this is 15 that'll be 61 with this it's 75 with this it's 8000 so by putting each of these five on the field it's exactly 8000 attack so you're able to kill them through d barrier so i mean d barrier is one of the only ways you're gonna lose so i just made a change one of these instead of two three desires because this will be four pots right anywho this is 2400 defense that's nasty. Anyways, I like the Mocharmies in this main deck at all six because they're level four. So if you go first and drop four hand traps with your only play about to get a hand trap, just pass, dude. Because your Mocharmy will make dumb pass in conjunction with your hand traps. Nibiru is one of the strongest hand traps this meta. A lot of people think, oh, first off, Malice cannot play around Nibiru for their life. So there's just one thing. But now people are going to be like, oh, the field spell will stop Nibiru, Steven. Do what you're talking about. I have over 100 matches on my docket with this deck already. Nibiru is the best hand trap in this whole format. I'll tell you why. You are never going to draw just Nibiru. You're playing 18 hand traps. Post side, you're playing 21 hand traps. Uh, it's re ratio because of cross out. But I like talents and thrust post side as well. And you don't want to remove your starters. Anywho, you're always drawing Nib with one of the others. Ash, Valor, Imperm, one of these. Mo Charmies will draw into more of them. So... Then it becomes absurdly broken because you will never allow them to go into their duo drive. So they are never getting their field spot unless they hard draw it, which is simply just not going to happen. You're not going to hard draw one of in a deck. It's just not happening. And in that scenario, you deserve it, bro. But I will play around destroying them every time unless they draw one up every time. So they're going to go into the most worst play in the universe with this card. Most decks, I don't even know how to pronounce it because it sucks so much. I've been playing this deck. I've basically been, in the words of a great American hero, I ain't going to Saturday, NBA young boy. That's all I've been doing all month. I've been training in the Hyperbone time chamber to defeat everyone at YC Sanaheim. So as you guys probably haven't seen my videos lately, it's because I've been playing a lot of dueling book and life, etc. But now we're back. This card says your opponent cannot target monsters you control 2,000 more attack or can be destroyed by effects. So it plays around Ghost Ogre, it plays around Valor, plays around Imperm, but it hard loses to Ash and Nib. So, as you guys are going to see in later videos, and I'm going to post all week all Rise Hill videos of me clapping cheeks uh, left, right, and center. You, you need to keep in mind, a lot of people are going to go into this and then try to go into dual drive, but then you hard get to obliterate it to Asher Nib. One hand trap, Asher Nib. But if you go into dual drive first, you get hit with one of these, then the best play after that is you go into Dugaris. Combo should be, and I'll show you guys in a later video all the combos. You have to go dual drive first, always with your hand, then go into Dugaris. Those are two cards your, your opponent must Ash or Valor. And then even after you go Dual Drive and gets, let's say, Valor, even after Dugaris gets Ashed, then you go into Detonator. You're, you're playing always for three, four hand traps. Even with three hand traps, there's a lot of time you could do four. 
because you're both sides you're having many ways to play on their hand traps so that's the combo i always go dual drive first then do, and i'll show you guys later you go dual drive first you go do garis and then you go detonator and that way you're playing around multiple hand traps. your opponent needs three hand traps to play to stop you but then hold on both side you're playing your ash your cross out your call by your talents your thrust so it's one two three four five six seven ten ways to play on their hand traps because both side Ash is stopping their mulch armies because you got to assume they have it. So then they're going to need four hand traps to stop you. So if they need four hand traps to stop you, they have two cards in their hand. Assuming one is dead, they're left with one. Let's go. And then your 18 hand traps will stop them. So that's how we play this deck. Do not go into the, the this combo, which a lot of people do. It gets obliterated by, by Ash Nib. You don't want to do that because everyone's playing Ash and a lot of people will play Nib. But a lot of people think Nib is bad this format. It's not. It's broken. Anywho. Yeah, I'm going to just name the cards for those who don't know. Three Ice Rail, three X Ray Zeal, three Thode Ray Zeal, one Node Ray Zeal, one Palma Ray Zeal. You play this, as I said earlier, you're going to just fast forward to this. You play a Palma Ray Zeal because through Deep Barrier, if you add all these together, 17 plus 5 is 22, plus 15 is 37, plus 14, 37 plus 14 is 51. And then Palma Ray Zeal is, uh, so you need 2,900 attack to OTK them through Deep Barrier. So Palma Ray Zeal is 1,200. But then you use the effect to send Ice Ray Zeal, making it 2,900. I think Konami did that on purpose, where all five of these attacks together equal 8,000. That's very cool what you can do with this deck. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some post patterns later. And you do not need to main deck Ray Zeal Hold Thruster. It's actually win more. I understand there's some plays where to play around Ultimate Slayer. I'm not playing around Ultimate Slayer, okay? I'm just fucking not doing that. You're not. There's, you'll main deck this card. Oh, cool interruption. Cool, really good card. Bro, it actually, even going first, it just gets stuck in my head a lot. It, I do play different back row decks, and I do kind of like floodgates and stuff, but I still don't really want to play it. But I have it in here for now. I might remove it entirely. And I understand the quick effect XYZ summon is pretty cool. Sometimes you can go for OTK. You can even use it to go Zeus in the battle phase. It's pretty cool. I think at least if that's a cool play, like, like attack a battle and then XYZ with it on top to go for OTKs or this card when they don't expect it. But yeah, anywho, that's it for the main deck. And then the six more Charmy Ash Nebula Imperm. You can put in these if you want, but I just feel that you're playing around malice keep in mind you could put in other stuff if you like droll conflicts with the mall charmies a lot i don't care what people say they conflict so you almost have to decide which ones you like and it's very clean this is 18 starters bro it's a lot better than like the 15 that a lot of people play when seven tycoon comes out you're gonna play like 20 plus starters uh as for side deck i play one ogre one mourner and one droll for cross out designated reasons no other hand trap matters this deck could play shifter this deck doesn't care about this deals Keep in mind, by the way, when you're using Node and the and the uh, plugin, try to target fires in the grave to play around all bestials. Just a small thing to keep in mind uh, for the deck. Three cross up, one call by talent, one talent for the cross up, but also for the thrust. And I feel that thrust into D barrier is too so, so powerful post side deck that it, I feel like I just need to play it. This way, you do have three draw cards and you have three ways to get into it. I was playing Lance one Lancia because you could small world into it with some cards. Small world in this deck right now requires zero you don't zero bridges whatsoever. I like playing the one draw as well because for uh, you can post if you don't have a multi you're going first both side, you can many ways get into the draw. So I want to play a Lancia, but the, uh, I don't care. I'm gonna destroy that deck anyways going first, so it's not too relevant for that. But, uh, when seven attack comes out, you need to play the Lancia, but you don't need to. And don't cookie cutter copy OCG decks because so much stuff are different. Like they have maxis for one to stop turns easier. They have such a different format. They have scythe lock. So Malice might be equal power of Ryzeal. Not really, because I'm going to play this, and this is bad. Everyone should play this. But, like, it, it's an entirely different meta, right? Uh, so, yeah, I want to play these. And also, post side deck going second. When you play these three hand traps, sometimes you, you should be cross out into D barrier sometimes. Sometimes. Because sometimes the only way you're going to lose. But by playing this, you're able to AK through it anyways. Three of these. Also, always put in the talents and double thrust going second. Always. So what I do is I post side, I remove three small world because I need my hand traps to stop them. So small will be less effective going second. So I put in these three hand traps against almost every meta deck like Malice and Ariseal. And I put in these three as well, guarantees that's six. If you put in these six, the, what I do is I remove three small world of probably, I might keep a palm, I might remove and the desires. So I'll keep two pots. I remove these four for sure. I need to play around a little bit. Well, depending on the format, what you think is, is different. But you don't want to touch any of your Ryzeals. That's why you don't want to play too much. But Talents and Thrust equals a bond. So going second, Thrust could be either be a Bonfire or it could be a Talents. Or it could be a Desires, right? So you don't want to, like, like I would always be, put, put, keep one of each pot. And also three pots, random. Two Desires and one Prosperity is better than three Desires. Because you're able to resolve one Desires. And you're also able to resolve a Prosperity. Yeah, you're able to resolve two Desires sometimes. But... It just sometimes it'll be a little bit better. And Prosperity, I don't even like as much because you go to Garis almost every game. So, and you draw a lot. 
So I desire is arguably might be better than prosperity, but I do want both sides. Like, it's debatable which one I'd prefer, whether it be desires or prosperity or both. Four of them isn't that bad either. There's a cool play you could do as well to end a whole Harbinger. There's a uh, this card where it says you could detach one from this card. Like a two level four monsters. So going first, I think about citing this actually. You could detach one material, add a photon and a galaxy card. Then there's a trap card that you can add that says on a galaxy photon on a photon monster or something like that. Special a, a galaxy monster from your action deck four ranks higher. So you summon Hope Harbinger. So you're basically able to rank four Hope Harbinger your opponent, which is pretty damn cool. But Ryzeo doesn't really care about spells too much, neither does Malice too much. So I opted not to go for it because then it'll require me to play a, two cards in the extra deck. The extra deck's pretty tight, which I'll get into soon. Play one D-Barrier for this. I need to play one of this, one Duster, two Cosmic. The extra deck is two Duo Drive, two Detonator. Some people like to turn zero, X Rise will send a Duo Drive or Detonator to attach it with Duo Drive. You do not need to do that because you can play right if you're with the plug-in anytime you like. Dugaris is vital. I literally go to every game going first because when you can set your hand up, your opponent's not playing, so it's irrelevant. Helps for OTKs as well. Baguska is absurd. I'm not playing Dweller because the only deck it affects in the meta is Fire King. And Tornado is almost just as effective, in my opinion. Same with Snake Eye. It's just as effective. Dweller, yeah, it stops a turn for a few grave effects, but not the whole deck. Dweller, I'm sure I'll, you'll miss it for some shitter decks. But until Dweller becomes relevant and gets decks in the meta, I'm not putting it in. Even Castell comes up. If you guys, you guys see a replay, I'm going to post tomorrow. Castell was very good. Castell or 101, I think, is very important. Because Castell or 101 helps you defeat detonator a lot easier but you just don't know if your opponent's gonna put detonator in, in a defense or not most of the time they put in an attack obviously so one one might be nicer but castell i guess is more it's capable to do a few more things with castell than one one so i have to play this out ignis was pretty cool for going second and it plays around ghost helps all your cards play around ghost ogre and helps you play around detonator going second by just starting with Dragon Egg Mister, then going into a rank 4. By going into a dual drive, for example, if they detonated your dual drive, you add Egg Mister to protect it. Just as an example, or to play around Gold Soul, you see game 1. Exiton comes up a lot. Just try to sneak it in if you can. This card comes up a lot. I removed it, but there's a lot of OTKs with this card. You need to play it. For I removed it many times. And you're able to search spells a lot. So there's an OTK where you go dual drive, detonator, Dugaris. And then you go Dugaris, slap this card on top of Dugaris. You can OTK, you can do a lot of damage with it together. Aggregate is important. These three slots, Zeus does come up. It does come up. You're not going to go into turn zero or turn one, but there are many scenarios where you're sitting on a dead car. Like, let's say dual drive gets ashed or something. You try to do it again against Valen, but it just so happens that a one interruption Zeus is, is helps you win. Same with Typhon. You're going to have hand trap wars a lot of a lot of pa uh, passing and shit like that. Typhon has won and lost many games that I, my opponent won because he had it. I lost it because I didn't have it. I won once because I had it. It will come up occasionally. And there's no other XYZ I'm missing right now. Maybe a third dual drive, but I've never missed it if you play properly with it. But then you already win the game. Dweller would be the only other card or the Hope Harbinger stuff. But going first, I very am a big believer. Start with dual drive, then go to Garus, then go Detonator. And if your opponent nibs out, you could even go Baguska after two. Like, the deck plays around a lot. Let them hand trap your dual drive. Dual drive, yeah, it adds two, but it doesn't. You don't need it to win whatsoever. The field spell is like it's a good field spell. It's a cool dynamic, but it's not broken by any means. It's not a plus. It's a it, it sometimes draws, sometimes doesn't, and it negs a card by removing a card. Like you're already gonna, you're gonna, it would have been a dead to negate anyway. So that makes sense. So if dual drive doesn't resolve, it's not the end of the world. Who gives a shit? Let them negate it. Then go to Garus, which is draw two, discard one. The card you're discarding most of the time is gonna be like unusable anyways so you're basically just drawing two hand traps you're playing 18 post side deck defensive cards that's why i like pop the desires one the prosperity i'm sold i'm <laughs> not done bro like it's, it's that good like i really like dugaris what like post side you're drawing five draw pot of desires two dugaris two field spell one that's five draws bro your, your opponent's that's why i love the thrust deep area all right and then yeah then the one donner comes up with nibiru because you cannot search with x Ryzeo. As, uh, with Nibiru in the field. Hence, this is pretty good. Now I'm going to show you guys a combo tutorial. I would love to show you guys this in person when the cards are obviously not released yet. So this is what your average hand looks like. Two or three hand traps, two or three starters, and all cards function as starters and extenders. So every single card in the deck is a starter or an extender. That's what makes it so broken. Like, absurdly broken. So, I'm just going to begin. The same combo could be done with X Rise Heal, Ice Rise Heal. They're all the exact same thing. You can end on the same combo with all of them. You can start with Ice, you can start with X, it, it, it is almost irrelevant. So I'm going to just show you guys the combo here. We're going to go, okay, Ice. I like starting with Ice because it's hand trap bait. 
So if your opponent hand traps the ice, thanks, you lost a card. Never, ever, ever, ever hand trap the main deck Ryzeo monsters unless it is a simplified game state where you're required to do so. So here we're going to go into ice, the special Thode. If we're going to use Thode effect, we're going to add another ice. Uh, and then here right away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay. I'm going to allow my opponent to hand trap my dual drive. Let them. It doesn't matter. You're playing for free regardless. So if they hand trap this right here, you don't care. If they do hand trap it, I'm going to show you guys the combo. If they ha hand trap or don't, it doesn't matter. So they hand trap it right now. You simply just go into X. You go into Node. You go into Dugaris. And then if they stop the Dugaris, uh, then you go into Detonator. It's not. It's it's that simple. I'm going to show you guys just for now what it's. Let's so see. You still and you have three hand traps. I'm going to show you guys still the full combo like this. By the way, because you have, because I have, I'm just going to search in X Ryzeal. Like if you have Ice Ryzeal. You're gonna search for X. It's a one-card combo. I'm just showing what I would do with this hand. Like, if that makes sense. If you go to Thode, would search an X Rise Heal, but we clearly have an X Rise Heal, so you're just gonna not do it. So this is, I can show you a one-card combo. Every card's a one-card combo, I guess it is. If that makes sense. It's different logic for you guys. We're gonna have to plug in. We're gonna have to Rise Heal across. Doesn't matter. Okay. At this scenario, I'm gonna activate this immediately. And if you want, you can save this. I'm just gonna activate it now, because I, I play differently, assuming certain stuff resolve and certain stuff doesn't so i'm going to activate this and i'm going to special the uh thode from grave it doesn't matter what you special uh, i like to play around bestial so uh, if possible summon fire ones back and you're just going to attach anything i'm uh going to attach another fire because later i would like to put a few of them back if possible so i'm going to put this now you have a negate just in case they nibiru and now i'm going to summon into x y zeal and act x y zeal effect x y zeal effect will get me node Node is very powerful. I'm going to show you guys exactly why now. My next play now, if they didn't hand trap this, the only hand trap they might have is Nade, which is protected by Rise Across. I'm going straight into Dugaris. No questions asked. No questions asked. I'm going straight into Dugaris. I want to draw more cards. And it allows your Rise Across to, if your dual drive gets hand trapped right away, you will not be able to put cards in your graveyard unless you do some neg plays. You need to Dugaris to put cards in grave. It's actually important to get the grave free flowing. I'm going to draw two. Discard one. Doesn't matter what I what I have here. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna just discard anything. Whatever. I'm gonna discard this. This is all a one card combo. Keep in mind. I it, like I would have searched an X Y Z instead of the X Y Z. So I'm just discarding the extra cards. All a one card combo. Then I'm gonna summon the node, and I do not want to get rid of cards in my hand for obvious reasons. So I'm going to activate the node, and I'm gonna send the Dugaris, summoning back preferably a fire. Again, you want to play around Bestials as much as humanly possible. Then I'm gonna go into overlay here, do it to detonator. Then I'm gonna activate detonator's effect, uh, attaching. I uh, forgot to send the aggregator. Lol, just while I was showing you guys this. XYZ is summoned by sending an XYZ, by the way. Uh, I know I'm gonna hear that in the comments, but I'm trying to go as fast as possible for you guys, and it's pretty uh, allowed in here. So detonator, get into aggregator. Always send this. Don't send a, a card for dual drive. Dual drive. You'd much rather get this because you're going to get imperm or aggregated a lot on your detonator. So you want to be able to use this effect as cost to still negate something on their opponent's turn. It does come up. Then at this point, we're going to use the Rise of Cross. There's no other fire to put back. So if they want to hand trap us at this point, you, you, you go ahead. We already have everything we want. If they summon a Magnum, but let them and then pop it. Or, or if you want, you can just negate it with the field spell. So we're going to put back uh, the, the plug-in and we're going to put back one of uh, the Ice Rise. We're going to draw one card. So just like that, look, we have four four hand traps, detonator, so it's four negates. But we can have five negates if you want with small world, but it's uh, do not small world here because you're gonna have to Dugaris draw. Remember, you Dugaris drew. So your play always goes draw two Dugaris, draw one field spell. If it got interrupted, the only thing that that, di that differs is that you have no field, like let's say dual drive and Dugaris get interrupted. You still have detonator three hand traps. That will not change. You will always have detonator three hand traps. If they, and they're going to be at four cards to their detonator three hand traps. That's how you play the deck properly. So even if they had multiple hand traps, or the one extender, you can play through three hand traps. I'm not going to swallow here because I want to have follow up. And my opponent is not playing through two pops of detonator, a negate. So three pops of detonator, a negate and aggregator, a rise and negate with the dual drive, and then four hand traps. This is why the trap is unnecessary. Even if I were to attach the dual drop, the trap to dual drop to put the trap in the graveyard, realistically, what in the heck is a tr the trap gonna do in the graveyard to help me? I get a quick XYZ summon? I don't care to quick XYZ summon. You're playing this with as little bricks as possible, all hand traps are starters and extenders, nothing else. I don't want anything that might potentially be bad. That's a deck. 
500. Oh, well, I could have 11 in the gates. That's more than pendulum. But not as good, obviously. All right, guys, the video. Hope you guys like it. Smash the subscribe button. Smash the like button. See you guys in the next video. Peace.